Hello and welcome to Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I'm going to talk about the basic adjustments in camera roll. Well, out of all the adjustments, probably the basic panel is the most important one because this will be the one that you will use the most of the time. Even if you don't use any of the other tabs, just concentrate on the basic tab, you can still achieve amazing results with your roll photographs. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the exposure or tonal changes that we can do in the basic panel. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about the rest, the clarity, vibrance, and saturation. So for now, I'm going to talk about the exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Well, first of all, it's good to know that we have an auto option here. So if I click on this, this will align and adjust all these values and try to make the best result out of this image. Well, we can see it already created a much better result. Our image is much higher in contrast and even the details look much better. So let's just, just have a look at before by clicking on default and auto again. You can also set back any of the values to the default value if you double click on them. So double clicking on them will individually set them back to the zero level. Or you can always hold down Alt and click on Reset. Because when you hold down Alt, Cancel will turn to Reset and then you can reset all the changes that you applied in the Camera Row dialog box. There's another very useful thing to know. If you like to work with the histogram, which you can find here on the top, you can also use that to access the tonal changes. So if I hover over it, here in the middle, I will be able to change the exposure. So I just need to click and start dragging left and right, and you can see that the exposure value will change in the basic tonal values. If I hover over a bit further down uh, to the left, I will be able to access the shadows. And notice below the histogram, it also says shadows. So if I click on that and start dragging it left or right, I will be able to change the shadows value. If I go all the way further to the left, I will be able to change the blacks value. And then further to the right, after the uh, exposure, we will be able to find highlights. And all the way on the far right, I will be able to change the whites. So these are the main values. And as you can see from the histogram, you can actually change all the tonal values apart from contrast. So that's the only one you can achieve only if you uh, use the values from the tab. Another useful thing to remember is to hold down Alt to check clipping when you change these tonal values. So like if I hold down Alt and change the exposure slider, I can see the details which I'm going to be uh, clipping. So these are the highlight clipping. And if I want to show the highlight clipping warning, I can also click on this little triangle here. So that's the uh, keyboard shortcut O if I want to turn it on and uh, again O to turn it off. So it will be represented with red colors. And if I want to, I can also turn on the shadow clipping warning, which is U from the keyboard. And uh, if I reduce the exposure, you will see it will show up as a blue highlight over the image. So either holding down Alt or using these clipping warning options. I'm going to turn them off now. And I'm going to set the exposure back to zero by double clicking on it. And I'm actually going to set back everything to default values. So why is it useful to change, first of all, highlights and shadows separately? So why not use exposure all the time whenever you want to change the tonal values? Well, exposure is great to globally change all the tonal values, so brighten up the image or darken the image. But in case you want to brighten the shadows without brightening the highlights or darken the highlights without darkening the shadows, you can use these separated tonal values. So highlights, if I drag that up, will only brighten the highlights or if I drag it to the left, will only darken the highlights without affecting the shadow details. You can also keep an eye on the histogram here on the top, and you can tell that the shadow values will stay in place, and only the highlights, the far right part of the histogram, will move around. And the same applies to shadows. So if I start moving that to the left, 
only the shadows will be affected again. I'm darkening the shadows. And if I drag the shadow slider to the right, I'm brightening the shadows. So once again, if you look at the histogram, the highlights won't change, only the shadows will move right and left. And that's really cool because, for example, in this case, if I want to show more details of the car here in the front, especially on these dark details, I can inc include more of them by just dragging the shadows to the right. So even on the tree, I can see more details showing up. And if I want to darken the highlights, I can just drag highlights to the left. By having shadows on the far right and highlights on the far left, I'm showing the most possible details in the image, but actually at the same time reducing the contrast. So while showing more and more details, we are losing a bit of the contrast of the original image. So that can be always compensated by using the contrast. So I can always drag that up after using um, a high shadows and a very low highlights value. We can always compensate the loss of contrast with the contrast value. Or of course, I can always be a little bit more gentle with these values and don't overuse them. So if you just globally want to improve or increase the brightness, just use exposure or if you want to darken the image, just reduce exposure, and then use highlights and shadow values separately to show more details in both of these tonal ranges. And last but not least, whites and blacks, they work the same way as highlights and shadows, but for the extreme uh, tonal values, like whites will only affect the brightest details in the image, and blacks will only affect the darkest details in the image. So these are great to increase contrast. So I usually work with these two values. If I want to add high contrast to my image and I want to add that extra punch to it. Of course, you can always use contrast as well. It's up to you which one you prefer, but I prefer actually to use whites and blacks. And keep in mind that you can also check the clipping when holding down Alt while changing the values, the tonal values like blacks, whites, shadows, and highlights. And that's all I wanted to show you in this video. As I said, in the next episode, I'm going to talk about the rest of the basic dialog box, which is clarity, vibrance, and saturation. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.